My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Continuous Recording Part 4, Calibration Snapshot, you will learn how to use Continuous Recording combined with the Calibration Snapshot feature. This process will result in several match images that can be used as calibration frames for third-party software that process data from two or more synchronized cameras. These frames can be saved in a user chosen format, for example, TIFF. Continuous recording can be used in a variety of ways to automatically record a CINE into the camera's memory, then immediately edit and save that CINE to a user specified location of an attached hard drive without any user intervention by providing a soft or hard trigger to the camera. Once the save process completes, the camera will automatically be placed back into the recording mode to repeat the process until the continuous recording feature is disabled by the end user. In order to use this feature, we need to set up the camera's physical connections for synchronized imaging by connecting the camera's frame sync clock sources to their appropriate connectors. If an external clock generator is to be used to provide the framing clock, connect the clock source to the F-Sync connectors of each camera. If an iRig B clock is used as the clock source, connect the clock source to the iRig N connector of each camera, and ensure the trigger lines are connected together to an external triggering device, such as a pickle switch, to provide a hard trigger to the cameras. For this tutorial, I'm going to connect the F-Sync connectors of my two cameras together, the iRig out connector of the Miro 320S Cam2 camera, the frame clock source camera, to its own iRig in connector, and the iRig in connector of the Miro Lab 310 Cam 3 camera, the camera being clocked by the Miro 320S Cam 1 camera, and the trigger connectors of both cameras to a single pickle switch. Now what I need to do is set up the camera's software parameters for synchronized imaging. In the Manager tab, I'll right-click the Miro's Cameras Group folder and select the Show Only Images from this option from the pop-up window to open a live preview panel for each camera. In the Live tab, I'm going to click the Camera Lock button to lock the cameras together. As you can see by the red border around their preview panels, any changes I make will be performed to all the cameras locked or grouped together. We will discuss using camera groups in the multi-camera control tutorials later in this series. The next thing I want to do is ensure all the cameras are set to one partition and close the camera setting selector. For details on using partitions, review the multi-cine and PCC tutorials. Now I'll set the capture parameters as required. The resolution, the frame rate, and set the post trigger value to 1 for all the cameras. It may be necessary to set up the exposure time individually depending on the lensing used, the camera positioning, and the lighting conditions. Since I've made changes to one or more of the cine settings, I need to perform a current session reference. Notice both cameras are performing the current session reference. The reason they both do is because the cameras are locked or grouped together. With the Cine settings defined, I need to specify the frame clock source for the cameras under the Advanced Settings External Sync Options. Even though I'm using the Miro 320S Cam 1 camera's internal oscillator, which is equivalent to an iRig B signal clock source, as the framing clock source, I still need to set both cameras to lock to iRig to ensure the cameras will be synchronized. If an external generator is used to provide the framing clock, I would set the sync imaging parameter to external for the cameras. And if an iRig B clock is used as the clock source, I'd set all the cameras to the lock to iRig option. The lock to video option instructs the camera to capture frames at a rate that is a multiple of the video frame rate with a defined phase relationship to the video signal. For more details on this clock option, refer to the functional descriptions, sync to video mode topic, 
provided in the PCC help file. With the cameras still locked together, I can start defining the continuous recording parameters. I'll start by clicking the Browse button to open the Save Cine dialog window, where I'll navigate to the folder the calibration snapshot images are to be saved into, in this case the C colon Program Files Phantom Cine's Tutorial Cine's folder. In the File Name field, I'm going to enter the root name of the files being created, for this example Stereo. The resulting files will have Stereo as the first part of the file name structure, followed by the shot number, such as Stereo underscore zero zero dot tiff. I could save the captured images in any of the available formats found in the Save as Type pull-down selection list. However, for this example, I'm going to use the TIFF 1236 option. In the Range option area, I need to select User Defined from the pull-down selection list and enter a 1 in both data entry fields. If I wanted to, I can specify any available save options. I'm going to leave these as is. For details, see the Applying Border Data and other Save Options tutorials. The last thing I need to do in the Save Cine dialog window is click the Save button. Notice, the software tells us where the files will be saved along with the range of images to be saved. Okay, now I'll enable or check the calibration snapshot option, then activate continuous recording. As you can see, the cameras are now in the recording mode. With the cameras locked, I'm going to apply a hard trigger, a switch closure for this example, to the cameras by depressing the attach pickle switch. As you can see, the cameras captured and saved the files automatically to the specified locations. So let's take a look at what we just did. We'll do this by selecting the Open File Toolbar button and navigating to the folder containing the folders and files that we just created. In this case, the C colon Program Files Phantom Cine's Tutorial Cine's folder. Notice a folder containing an image file for each capture or trigger was placed in the Tutorial Cine's folder for each camera. Before I finish, I'm going to disable or uncheck both continuous recording and calibration snapshot. So this is a way to create several matched images to be used as calibration frames for third-party software that processes data from two or more synchronized cameras. This also concludes the continuous recording tutorials, where you learned how to use this feature in its native form, to combine continuous recording with the image based auto trigger and rely on events of interest to trigger the camera in an unattended mode and then save that event out to a disk drive, return to the recording mode and wait for the next event of interest. Use continuous recording to automatically trigger itself at specified time intervals using multi-cine, image range, firmware auto recording and auto trigger and create several matched images to be used as calibration frames for third-party software that processes data from two or more synchronized cameras. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull-down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.